most sketchbooks come with a story a sort of overarching theme that runs throughout the entirety of the sketchbook some of them are spontaneous and others are predetermined well i would say that this sketchbook falls into the predetermined category before i started out this sketchbook i set myself a bunch of goals i felt like i was stagnating in my art a little bit and so this sketchbook is sort of an attempt to combat that call it a, a training arc if you will but it's just me trying to learn things so that i can you know improve myself so let's just jump into these goals and then we can we can go into the rest of the sketchbook so the first one is to study environment elements specifically secondary details now i am an environment concept artist by trade so this is sort of the most important thing for me which is to get better at my craft. And the second one, which is to learn and copy from real world examples and apply them to my art. So this means just observing and looking at literally anything, looking at real world things, whether it's you know a table lamp or a Bluetooth speaker or in my bookshelf, and then taking some elements from that and observing it and then bringing that into my own design. The third one is film composition and lighting. Um, this is really important, especially if you are an environment concept artist or a keyframe concept artist, even, I mean, even if you're an illustrator, but the whole point is to study stuff from like movies that I like and their compositions and lightings, because, you know, you can have a really good design, but if you don't compose the camera shot properly and light it properly, sometimes it might not make it even past the first stage. And the last one is to master studies. So these could be masters from the past or living masters, basically just artists who have made stuff that I like, and I'm just trying to take some stuff from them, steal bits and pieces here, and then use them for my own art. So these are the goals that I've written down, and I think it's really important to write them down because you know it's hard to just stick to it and, and be consistent throughout the entirety of the sketchbook. And yeah, I do stray from it sometimes, you know, especially just want to doodle and draw some mechs in your sketchbook, which is fine. But ha having it written down is a really good reminder and, and not to not stray super far away from your initial goal and what you set out to do. So this is kind of what an example of like looking at real world stuff looks like. And also Master Study, this is Brian Sum, who's an incredible concept artist. Um, so this is like my monitor arm and this is my table lamp. Like it's stuff that I look at every day, but I never really truly paid attention to how they look and how they function like you know how these rotate and like how many joints there are in the mon my monitor arm it's not something that i really thought about but looking at it you know you can actually study a lot of it and f learn a lot and observe this and then sort of apply it to you know some other art later this could be like a mech arm and this could be some sort of mechanical piece from for something else so that's kind of an example of that and this is also like one of those which is like a motorcycle racing suit that could be you know used for character design for whatever later on like you think you'd know what something looks like but really you it's it's hard to say until you actually do it like draw a bicycle and then like uh see how close you get to actually the real thing and and doing that you sort of realize that i you don't actually know too much about a lot of things you just think you know it because your brain processes it and it takes a very deliberate action to actually observe and draw it and then commit that to memory um so here's here's a drawing i did uh, making my own ink um that was a long time ago but this is a good video about it uh, go watch that all right um so yep here is another one which is a study of a suspension system so i think this is like from an old truck because there are still leaf springs in here but yep so this is like what that process looks like which is it's ugly but you still learn a lot just doing it and then you, you gotta reward yourself with some spaceships so that's that's only natural so this is a study of baroque composition which i suppose is a master study and also falls into the composition thing so i want to get better at a lot of things and, and this is one way to do it which is to study you know writing lots of notes about like learning what a line of action is the main line of action and the secondary line of action and then sort of applying it here so the format of this book is sort of like okay here is the page where i do something and i learn it and these are notes and i just like i'm absorbing information i don't care if i'm drawing ugly drawings or it, it isn't even a drawing at all fine whatever and then i get that information and then i try to apply it to something on my own right so this is me sort of like downloading the information and this is me installing it and using it and so by doing that it sort of helps me 
retain that information a little bit better. Sometimes I find that, you know, you do studies and then you, if you don't apply it like this, like these are studies of trims and borders and like how to apply them. And if you don't actually put them to practice at least once, it's really difficult to sort of retain that information. I find myself drawing a bunch of like things randomly and like, oh, doing observation drawings. And then if I don't sort of like immediately put it to practice or try and like use it on my own, it just falls away and I forget about it. And it's like, I might as well have never studied it to begin with. Here is um, again, more studies for trims and learning how to apply them to, uh, this is like the Berg Elts. I think it's like a castle somewhere in Germany, probably. Um, and so the question I get a lot is, you know, from beginner artists and is what do I study? Like, what do I, what do I learn in order to get better at drawing mechs or drawing spaceships? And really the answer is anything and everything. I know that's a terrible answer and that's not really an answer that a lot of people want to hear. But the truth is when I'm choosing what to study, a lot of it is really random and I don't necessarily know where it's going to come in and like how it's going to be helpful to me in the future. All I know is that I'm interested in it at the moment. So I'm just going to learn how to draw it. I think this is a piece from uh, a game. I think it might be Halo that I'm just, you know, oh, that's a cool piece. Let me just draw it and I'll just save it. This is me building a visual library. So this is what they call building visual libraries, right? This is me learning what a like stuff looks like. So here's like a hot pot and like here's a sieve for like scooping stuff out of a hot pot. Like who, like how is this going to be helpful to anybody in the future? Like what's this going to do for me drawing max? Probably nothing, but you never know. So it, it don't stress about what to learn as long as you're learning stuff and learning how to draw things, uh, then I think it's going to help your art in any way. It doesn't really matter. So of course you could be learning things like anatomy and perspective and all those fundamentals. And that would definitely help you get down the basics of like drawing and being a better a drawer, I suppose. But at the end of the day, I think it's what you study and what you like your interest and in these random things that you choose to study. Like you might, you might like a car, you might like to study cars and you might draw cars and you might like plants and you might draw a different kind of plant from someone else. And these sort of things that you study, this unique combination or collection of things is what makes you unique. And that's, this is sort of like how you define your style in a way. So yeah, that's, that's really it, you know? And then here, so I was like studying, um, horse skeletons earlier studying so, what a horse's skeleton looks like and then it's like okay maybe i could apply to something and then here i you know apply that skeletal shape and the horse skull into something that is a bit more fan fantasy right and so this is sort of an example of how something previously you've learned feeds into uh, something that you might be designing so if i wanted to draw a dragon and i didn't know you know this thing this probably wouldn't have come out, right? It would have been something else. Um, so here is a study of a firefighter. Firefighter helmets are really cool. And yeah, so there, I mean, naturally there's gonna be a lot of doodling and just drawing stuff. I think this is like some Pinterest figure drawing practice. So yeah, I mean, this is just gonna happen. Um, here are more figure drawings from the sponsor of today's video, Just Sketch Me. Uh, Just Sketch Me is a pose reference tool that helps you spend less time planning and more time focusing on what matters most, making great art. With simple yet powerful tools, Just Sketch Me enables you to create any scene as a reference piece for your next artwork. So the way I use Just Sketch Me is as a figure drawing practice tool. It's basically like having a live model in front of you. I could pose my model however I wanted to and select a camera angle that I wanted to practice. And here I'm using their browser web app, but they are also available on iOS, Mac, Windows, and Android. Sign up using the link in the description below to try Just Sketch Me for free with no time limit and start creating. That's justsketch.me. So you'll notice that in a lot of my studies, I'll do these little small squares, so like panels, and snippets of the same thing that I'm studying. For me, it's more helpful to draw things multiple times. It's one thing to draw something once and then move on, but it's another thing to draw it multiple times. So here, are these, these are like, you know, this is just the view I was having tea, and this is the gas stove 
that we were using to boil the water and it, it looks super cool right so this is just me drawing it and figuring it out okay so like figuring out the shapes figuring out how that works okay i can i'm kind of interested in this part let me draw a close-up so i get a better understanding of how this part looks and this part you know works that's like a better way for me to retain information. It is a little bit harder and you can be lazy and sometimes just draw things once. But for me, I think it's really helpful to do things multiple times. That's sort of just the nature of practice, I feel. Here, this is a uh, study of a beetle or scarab. And so the first step is to sort of understand what it is you're looking at. And the first drawing is always never the best looking drawing. Um, it might be this, it might have been this one, it might have been this one. But the idea is to sort of like make an ugly drawing and quickly understand the proportions and what it is you're looking at. Get an understanding of it first. And then later on, you can just do a, a better drawing. But the first thing to do is these, these are the important ones, the ugly stuff. Um, this is another sort of composition study. I think these are from like films or photographs. This is like sort of the basis of which I am working. I don't know why this is empty, uh, but this is sort of the basis from which I am working on. So the first step is frop uh, fropping. The first step is framing and cropping and the structure of things. So ignore the details, ignore all that. Like how do you frame something? How do you crop it? How close do you crop it? Do you want to go further out, lower, higher? Um, that's framing and cropping. The next one is shape design. So shape design is literally not thinking about what it actually is, just the shapes, right? It could be shadow shapes. It could be, you could use light to sort of shape these shapes and, and make them interesting in an abstract way. It's sort of like graphic design. You'll get into that a little bit later. There's a study on that. That's like the second most important thing. And then the third last important thing is the details and brush strokes and color. Color, of, of course, I can't do here, but this is sort of like the level of importance. So from the, your priorities are this way. So the base is always framing and cropping. So I've learned. Uh, these are just like uh, no, portrait studies I, I got a pencil, so I might as well do, do some pencil drawings. Uh, I like them, it's fun once in a while. Um, it, this, this is a study from Robota, uh, from Doug Chang's book, Robota, which I love, it's really good, but I've never actually taken time to like study it. So yeah, it's really interesting, it's so cool. Um, this is another close-up of the same mech. It's like the uh, legs, and look at this, it's, it's wild. And then here's just like a, a light, I don't know, like some sort of like uh, stage light that I thought might be cool. Um, here's a doodle of car, not much to say here. Ah, okay, so this, this page is actually to me kind of the quintessential study sketchbook page. This doesn't look like a pretty page, it's in fact absolutely hideous. However, I find that this kind of stuff is the most helpful to me. To me, this is like the equivalent of like showing your work in math. Like you know how like your teacher, your math teacher used to tell you off or like, oh, you didn't show your work. Like how do you get to this answer? Oh, you gotta show like, your, you know, your calculations and your equations, you know, to prove that you've done the thing. So this is sort of the equivalent of that, which is like, yeah, it's not the final answer. And of course the final answer is the important thing. It's like the, the, the pretty thing, but this is the work that leads up to the pretty thing, the final answer. It's terrible scratching, it's terrible scribbles and just like learning things. So here I'm learning about like factory smokestacks and silos, but here I've learned so much more than like if I just drew like a pretty picture, like, you know, this, right? I didn't learn anything here, I didn't learn shit here. This is like where I'm actually learning things. And, and to me, this is like the, the important stuff. And then like, you know, I tried really hard. I got like, oh, I'm so tired. Let me just draw a Mac, draw a Mac, fine. Uh, so this one is also a study. Um, it's done from looking at the sneakers of a girl on the train across from me. Bruh. I know it's fucking weird, but like it, it wasn't a weird thing, okay? She had a really cool pair of sneakers on and I was just doodling on the train. I was, you know, I don't know. And I thought, hey, that's a cool, visual language and like design language. Let me turn that into a mech. And so this is like based on her sneakers. I, I where else am I gonna look? Where else am, okay, whatever. Here is a study of um, 
uh, engines. I just wanted to learn how engines work. I I sort of like had a vague understanding of like how an engine works, and like yeah, the the, the pistons go boom 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 boom. But I have never really thought about like each component of an engine and like how these things fit together and and how you know things rotate and move in relation to one another. And so here's like a study I did. This is probably my favorite page. It looks the best and it's also actually quite useful. Here is a study of uh, Blade Runner 2049. This is a two value study. So what I'm studying here is just light shapes, shadow shapes. So like I said right before, cropping is the first thing and then the second one is shapes. So I'm not even thinking about color and detail and, and brush strokes or whatever the third one is. It's just the first two and even more specifically, just the second one, right? I'm thinking about the shapes. I'm not even drawing out each line or each object. It's just sort of squinting my eyes and looking at it as if it was an abstract painting. And it helps to draw, write these notes down because, you know, sometimes you can learn things and you can forget them really quickly. And by the time you're on the next page, you know, it's gone. I don't write it down so that I can come back and read it. I write it so that I can remember it better, if that makes sense. Here is another um, sort of like a study. This is composition. So this is not even shadow shapes and light shapes. It's purely a compositional study. Um, and for me, this is studies for city shots. So like wide angle city shots that you see in movies. I mean, it's something that I do a lot as an environment concept artist. So it's something that I really want to get better at. So these are all environment shots or like wide city shots from different movies. These are all from different movies. So you can see, this is, these are all the movies this is from Arcane, this is from Tangerine, um, this is from Manhattan. So uh, these are all, it's a sort of way for me to study how each director and each movie does things differently. So by studying one single subject done by many different people, I sort of get a better understanding of how to approach things. So here's a study from a previous video. You go should go watch it. It's a good video uh, of a Gundam. Uh, I, I just like the doggies, it's, it's, it's sick. Uh, okay, here is a tree-toned study from uh, Into the Spider-Verse. So this is a study that I did with basically two markers, uh, two brush pens actually, a gray brush pen and a black brush pen. And this is studying shadows and light and how you can use contrast and shapes to sort of um, compose your image. So a lot of this is really vague. Right, like this is supposed to be Kingpin, but it doesn't matter because he's just a shadow shape in the uh, grand scheme of things, I suppose. And learning how to do that, you can tell these shots are actually super iconic and really, really readable. But yeah, just, you don't have to actually, like I just, I learned a lot when I'm doing this because like, I don't actually have to draw any detail as long as the shadow shapes and the light shapes are in the correct place and in the correct proportions, you can create a very compelling image. So here I'm going back to the um, suspension stuff that I've learned earlier. So before this was like a truck suspension, I was like looking at go-karts and like, okay, let me learn how to draw a go-kart suspension. So this is it and learning these components, you know, and then try and applying it into a thing. So I think this started out first. I tried to draw this and I was like, I don't actually know how this works. Like I was drawing the suspension and I realized I don't actually know what this looks like. Let me let me find out. And so here, these are all the studies and the notes in which I took to find it out. And uh, hopefully I got a better understanding of that. Um, these are studies of gliders. I, I just, you know, eh, gliders. These are more studies of gliders, but older, you know, figuring out if there is some sort of like through put between this one and this one, you know, if there's any sort of connection, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I haven't, I don't have an answer. Do those. These are like studies of like finding out nice panel shapes so I can use them in like, you know, sci-fi corridors and floor panels and wall panels and whatnot. You know, just trying to come up with like a library of like, okay, if it's just a flat square shape, how can I draw patterns in it to make them cool? And then like a door frame, which is sort of the same philosophy behind these. And this is a study from, I think this is actually from Green Knight, but I, I just tried to like use some paneling and like patterns here to like make it more sci-fi. But yeah, it's just some, this is just me trying to apply it in, in a very vague way. This is my audio interface. It's the Artura Mini Fuse. Um, and this is an XLR jack, which I thought was cool. I haven't actually really noticed it uh, for a long time. 
it was just sitting in front of me, but I've never actually paid attention to it. And I, you know, I, I realized it was pretty cool. So here, this is it. This is me taking elements from this and then creating it, right? So even from here, you can just put these, treat them as like flat patches and panels and just like paste them into a cube. And you can get something pretty compelling with it. This is another study from Green Knight. And here, this is the, the uh, uh, portrait drawings, more portrait drawings. Um, I tried to like do some lightness stuff, but it's not really my strong suit. Uh, this one is from Dune. And so here's what I'm talking about with the um, shapes, right? So think of it as pure abstract shapes. Looking at Dune, uh, especially in the sequence in the earlier parts where they are on uh, their home planet of, I don't remember the name. Okay, their home planet. They, they, there's a lot of uses of like circle, circles and circular framing of light. And so these are studies I did initially. This is this is the Arrakis one, but um, Caladan, that's the name. Okay, these are initial studies and it's like pretty close to what I was doing earlier. Um, you know, these, these drawings. But then on drawing it, I sort of realized that I don't even actually need to use light and shadow for these shapes to read clearly. Like, so I just did this, right? It's like doing a line art and just outlining these shapes and don't treat them as like people or doors and walls and pillars and shape like things. Treat them as pure abstract shape and look how interesting this looks. Like the read is still really, really clear. Like you can still see that these compositions, regardless of like what they are and whether something is light or dark, is still interesting to look at and like look at the, the uh, collection of detail here, like it's so dense with detail here. And then here, it's like a black shape. It's just a blank, I think it was a bookshelf or whatever, but it's just purely blank from, you know, an abstract graphical perspective. And look how interesting this looks. Even this one, right? Like look how symmetrical these two circles are and the framing of the two characters here with the vertical lines, it's really, really strong. And if you render it out and turn it into a movie frame, then obviously it's gonna look good. So that's sort of like my learnings from this one. And the last page, uh, what better way to wrap it up than a Mac as always. Just always gotta finish it up with a Mac. It's just self-indulgent, so indulge me. And that's it, that's the end of the sketchbook. Now, to me, this is what studying art looks like. This is how it feels to get better at art, to me at least. There isn't really a set direction in which I am moving towards. Like I'm not purposely studying something to get better at something. Like you know how you play RTS games like StarCraft and, and Red Alert, and it's like you have this map and it's dark and it's covered in fog of war and you have a character and you move a character, a unit, and as you move it, you push back the fog of war and you review bits and pieces of the map. That's what it feels like to me to study art is that I am slowly just revealing pieces of the map and pushing back that fog of war, but there really isn't a direction in which I'm heading towards. Like I don't know where I'm going. So whether it's studying teapots or beetles or a horse's skeleton, there isn't a set direction. Like there isn't a defined goal in mind. All I'm doing is letting my curiosity lead me to places and if they find happen to be, if they happen to be useful great if they don't i'm not too fussed about it at least i've reviewed a piece of the map more than i did last time so i i hope that this video is encouraging to you and that this sketchbook shows you that studying art can be accessible it doesn't have to be a very stressful thing like oh uh, you know let me study anatomy let me study all the muscles in the body that's gonna make you better don't get me wrong but it can also be as free as this so i hope that you take it easy don't stress out just let your curiosity guide you do whatever you want and slowly piece by piece push back the fog of war thank you for watching and i hope you have a good day